The world tour has long threatened to turn one bite, but is 2023 the year that it finally commits? Well, with Campanarts using a single chainring classified system in the classics, Roglic using a gravel group set on the final stage of the Giro, and Alvingegaard using one bite in his main warm up race before the Tour de France, we reckon one bite is now too popular a choice for us roadies to ignore. Before we take a look at Vingegaard's bike that we spotted this week at the Criterium de Dauphiné, let's cast our minds back to the last time that the pro teams made a concerted effort to ditch the little ring. Some of you might remember it wasn't exactly a raging success. It was, of course, the Aqua Blue team five years ago that hit the limelight, often for all the wrong reasons, whilst riding their one by only 3T Stradas. The Strada, which by the way is now available with a front mech, promised aero benefits thanks to no front mech mount. However, the SRAM group sets with 3T cassettes caused an almighty Twitter storm when Rick Delaney, the team owner no less, posted, this lab rat thing is costing us results, following a ship chain by one of his riders in the Tour de Suisse breakaway. Fast forward a few years and our next significant development in one by setups being used for road stages was the classified system on the bike of Victor Campenert at the Omloop Het Nulsbald Classic. No idea if I say it like that or not. As you probably know by now, the classified system ditches the front mech in favor of a special rear hub with a reduction gear inside. It's technology that thoroughly impressed us, so much so that it won our Money No Object Component of the Year in 2022. Since then, loads of wheel manufacturers clearly also see a future for classified, and the likes of Hunt, Parkours, Envy, DT Swiss, Mavic, and Reynolds, to name just a few, are now on board. As good as the classified system is, it does still have its cons, especially in the pro peloton. No, we're not talking about Campanerts having to walk up the moor on his 62 tooth chain ring setup, but rather wheel changes. Unless everyone chose to use it, which seems highly unlikely, then spare wheels won't have the required tech hiding inside. Oh, and it's also questionable how much lighter the system actually is, which then raises the question, is it worth ditching the tried and tested front mech? Arguably, one by his biggest success in the pro peloton was just a few weeks ago when Roglic used his SRAM Explorer equipped Cervelo R5 to climb his way into pink at the Giro, winning the stage by a whopping 40 seconds. That was surely the headline that SRAM was gunning for. However, the supposed benefits of one by system, such as the weight saving, potential aero benefit, and better chain line, were overshadowed somewhat by a chain drop on the steepest section of the course, resulting in a push by his ex ski jumping teammate. Roglic's setup used SRAM's Gravel Explore XG1271 cassette paired with a red AXS Explore rear mech to give him some absolutely tiny gears. The 40 tooth chainring up front and the 1044 tooth gearing at the back resulted in a sub 1 to 1 gear ratio, which certainly kept the eventual Giro winner spinning even on the multiple disgusting sections at over 22%. So after all that, did Jumbo decide that enough was enough? Well, no. In fact, it would appear that the Dutch team has doubled down on single chain rings. This week, we've been at the Dauphiné, the main warm-up race for riders and teams before the Tour de France. If you're one of the world's best and want to use new tech, then it happens here. A playground for equipment to be tried and tested before being taken to the biggest stage in cycling. Oh, and if you haven't already, go check out this unreleased prototype aero bike that we spotted. Anyway, what was the reigning Tour de France champ new tech to try? Yep, a one by chainring. Our shots show that Vingegaard is using a 50 tooth aero SRAM front chainring paired with a 1033 tooth SRAM red cassette at the rear, the biggest that the non-explore version of the red rear mech will take. Jumbo clearly thinks that the gearing will be sufficient for the hilly terrain of southern France, but we've done the maths and it doesn't leave him with an abundance of potential to spin. The biggest gear that this 50-10 gear combo gives is equivalent to using a 55-11. That does seem like more than enough for a rider that rarely contests the sprint. However, on the smallest end of the spectrum, the 50-33 combo gives a gear of just 1.51. If he was on a 39 tooth small ring that he usually uses, then he'd have to choose the non-existent 26 tooth sprocket at the rear to get a similar combination. As it happens, his spare bike is set up with a set with far larger sprockets, the same 1033 tooth set giving him two smaller gears than on his one by setup. As we mentioned earlier, a one by setup does bring plenty of benefits, especially to pro teams looking for every marginal gain. 
For example, there's the potential aero benefit of removing the front mech. For me or you, this would probably be negligible, but for the pros who spend most of their races averaging more than 40 kph, small changes can result in small watt savings. We'd predict around 5 watts, but don't hold us to that figure. In addition to that, you can also achieve a better chain line, which might offer better efficiency when compared to a more traditional 2x setup. They say every pro has a con though, and that most likely is the case here, as it will mean that when you're not climbing, more time will be spent down in the 10 tooth cog. The smaller the sprocket, the greater the drivetrain losses. Of course, the main reason we suspect Vingegaard has opted to use this setup, and yes, we really do think he's big enough fish to decide his own setup rather than being bullied into it by SRAM, is weight. Not only can you get rid of the front mech, that's 170 grams, including the battery in the bin, then the inner chain ring as well. That's likely another 40 grams or so, all with no weight being added. A SRAM spokesperson told us that this means Vingegaard can race on the aero bike, the Cervelo S5, that weighs similar to his climbing bike, the Cervelo R5. Unfortunately though, we didn't manage to get a scale on this to verify it. There's one other feature on Vingegaard's bike that caught our attention, and that's the shifters. Whilst the rest of Lotto Jumbo team rides around on the taller current generation Red Hoods, Vingegaard's bike has shifters that resemble the latest Rival or Force AXS with a much lower profile. Could these shifters be off the new generation of Red Group Set? We wouldn't mind betting that the new Red Group Set will indeed follow this design language, but the larger shifter buttons lead us to believe that these are just modified force levers with fancy graphics and perhaps a few internal weight savings. So, is 2023 the year that one by rules the peloton? Well, we can't see any other reason for Vingegaard to use it here than he intends on riding it on at least some of the Tour de France stages this year. Like it or not, one by is coming to the road. <laughs> a fly flew up my nose. <laughs> the dawn of 12 speed group sets has meant that one by is inevitable as gear jumps get smaller while still providing most riders with just about enough range. Let us know down in the comments section if you'd consider a one by road bike. If you found this content interesting, then give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.